In this video, we're going to go over the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. These two structures are very important in the endocrine system because they both secrete a lot of hormones that regulate physiology. There are two separate pathways in these two structures, and you can see how it works in this diagram. So first of all, there is what is called the hypothalamus anterior pituitary axis. This includes neurons in the hypothalamus that secrete releasing hormones into the hypophysial portal system. From the hypophysial portal system, these hormones then act on the anterior pituitary gland to secrete a variety of different hormones. There is also the hypothalamus posterior pituitary axis. In this system, the hypothalamic neurons produce and secrete hormones, and they send their axon projections through the posterior pituitary gland. So the posterior pituitary gland is essentially an extension of the hypothalamus. And here, the hypothalamic neurons release the hormones directly into the bloodstream. Okay, so now let's go through each of these in more detail. So as I mentioned, in the hypothalamus anterior pituitary axis, the hypothalamus produces these releasing hormones and releases them into the hypophysial portal system. The hypophysial portal system are blood vessels that connect the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland. So in this case, the anterior pituitary gland is separate from the hypothalamus and is made of glandular tissue. So the same type of tissue you expect other endocrine glands to be made of. Now, there are a number of different releasing hormones that the hypothalamus produces. We first have GHRH. This is growth hormone releasing hormone. Based off its name, it's not surprising that growth hormone releasing hormone stimulates the release of growth hormone, GH, from the anterior pituitary gland. We also have somatostatin. Somatostatin is an inhibitory hormone. This will inhibit the secretion of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. We then have CRH. CRH is corticotropin releasing hormone. This will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to release ACTH. ACTH will then go on to stimulate the adrenal cortex to release cortisol. We then have TRH. TRH is thyrotropin releasing hormone. This has two effects. So it will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to release thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone will act on the thyroid gland to release the thyroid hormones. TRH also has a partial effect of stimulating the release of prolactin from the anterior pituitary gland. Prolactin has an important role in milk production in females. At the same time, the hypothalamus secretes dopamine, which inhibits the release of prolactin from the anterior pituitary gland. So for this reason, dopamine is also called prolactin inhibitory hormone. And in this case, even though you have something that stimulates and something that inhibits, prolactin is predominantly under inhibitory control. So that means dopamine has a much more substantial effect in inhibiting prolactin secretion than TRH has in stimulating prolactin secretion. So that means really in order for prolactin to be secreted, you need to prevent the hypothalamus from secreting PIH. And finally, we have GNRH. GNRH is gonadotropin releasing hormone. This hormone will stimulate the anterior pituitary to release both FSH and LH. So follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which both have important roles in controlling reproduction. All right, so now we can look at the hypothalamus posterior pituitary axis. As I mentioned, in this case, you have hypothalamic neurons that produce hormones, and they send their axon projections through the posterior pituitary gland. So as a result, that means the posterior pituitary gland is made of neural tissue. It's not made of glandular tissue because it's really just the axons of hypothalamic neurons. So the hypothalamus slash posterior pituitary gland in this system releases oxytocin, which is important for uterine contractions, and it also has an important role in lactation. 
And it also releases vasopressin, which is also called ADH, antidiuretic hormone, which has an important role in regulating blood osmolarity. In particular, the release of ADH will increase water reabsorption in the renal system.